Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tiffany Beeston from Beauty and the Beastons and today I have a super simple summer inspired meal prep. So I'm basically starting off the video with most of the meat that I'll be using for my meal prep to kind of just get that over with. And I'm also going to be starting off with a sausage and spinach lasagna. It is so delicious. It's a very easy way to hide some veggies in for your kids. So the sausage that I'm cutting up right now is sweet Italian sausage and I'm just going ahead and taking the casing off of it. And the first sausage you saw, that was a kale and chicken sausage that we'll be using for a sheet pan recipe coming up. So the first thing I'm doing is just going to be browning the um, regular sweet Italian sausage for our lasagna. So while that sausage cooks up and I'm already over here at my cooktop, I'm just gonna go ahead and make some tri-colored quinoa. I'm just using this to put in the fridge as either a side. Um, we really like to put it into our regular salads with our greens and it just gives an extra boost of protein. So now that the sausage is done, I'm just draining the oil out. I used to just shove it right down my sink and then you guys were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Do not do that, you're gonna ruin your entire drainage system in your house. So now I know to put the oil in a bowl. So now that the sausage is all cooked and drained, I'm just going to add some spinach. And it looks like a lot, but it really wilts up to be almost nothing. So again, this is a very easy way to hide some veggies in for your kids. My kids love lasagna because it's full of cheese and sauce and just yummy goodness. And they also really love the sweet Italian sausage rather than like a turkey or a beef type of meat in the lasagna. And I'm just adding some sauce and mixing that all together. So this is gonna be the sauce mixture that I'm using for my lasagna. And most of the time for lasagna, you use ricotta cheese and you put an egg in it, and that kind of just helps make it a little bit more thin and you know keeps the lasagna cohesive. However, my daughter is allergic to egg, so I don't put an actual egg in two hours. I just am gonna go ahead and mix up the ricotta really well to make it an more like thin consistency and a little bit easier to work with. So I'm doing my sauce layer on the bottom. I'd love to know how do you layer your lasagnas. This is how I have always done it. And then these are a gluten-free lasagna noodle. Um, I know that it's hard to find gluten-free lasagna noodles sometimes, so I just wanna let you know, in the past, I've 100% made lasagna with just regular spaghetti and did layers of spaghetti, and it's delicious. I actually really like the consistency and almost prefer it over lasagna noodles because I do feel like the gluten-free lasagna noodles really tend to like curl up when they're cooked. Um, so yeah, so I have my sauce layer, my lasagna, and then I have ricotta on top and I'm doing a little bit of mozzarella cheese and then a little bit of Parmesan cheese. And then we'll repeat that process until everything is gone. So this lasagna just so happens to be our dinner for the night that I'm making it. Um, but lasagna is actually a really great thing to go ahead and freeze to cook for a later date. Um, I always think it's a great idea to make things like this before um, you go into labor or if you have a busy day. Um, or it's another great meal to drop off to a friend who just needs a break from cooking dinner. So yeah, lasagna makes a lot of people happy. So now I'm just going to show you this is real life. You know, my kids are home with me while I'm cooking as are most of yours. Um, but Tanner comes in here and whenever he helps cook, he likes to taste everything, which I think is one of the most amazing reasons to let your kids help you um, because it kind of like helps them like try things. But Tanner decided to try a big old mouthful of Parmesan cheese. He did not like it and he actually spit it into our lasagna. So luckily nobody was coming over for dinner this night. I promise if you come over for dinner, I won't have Tanner spitting in your food. So 
So I'm just popping this in the oven and it says to let it cook for anywhere from 50 um, minutes to an hour and I let it cook for about 55 minutes and it was perfect. However, if you are freezing it or having it refrigerated beforehand, you'll probably need to cook it for longer than that since ours was fresh and went right into the oven. So my quinoa is done. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put it away. Uh, if you haven't tried quinoa before, just try it. I promise you it's really easy. All you do is cook it for 15 minutes and cover it. It's very, very simple. Um, when I first got Chris to eat quinoa, I used to mix it in with his rice so he wouldn't notice because, you know, he just doesn't like to try new things sometimes. And then he wound up loving it and I actually brought it to my parents' house yesterday um, when we went over and they loved it too and that was their first time having it. So don't knock it till you try it. I feel like it's a really... Um, yummy alternative to rice. Again, I said it has the protein in it and it's actually considered a seed. But anyway, enough of my quinoa talk. I am moving on to cutting a bunch of chicken and later we'll be using this for kebabs. Kebabs are so easy to meal prep. Um, I feel like both lasagna and kebabs can seem like they take a long time, but when you're doing everything in one day, it really just frees up the rest of your evenings. You also just saw that I cut bacon. We're gonna be using that for bacon wrapped dates. Um, that's a really yummy snack, but I'm actually making that for my mother-in-law's birthday party. And I just everybody in our family loves that. I also just shred up some rotisserie chicken and we're gonna be making the most delicious chicken salad later. And that is what part of this corn is for as well. And one of my other cooking videos, we talked about husking or shucking corn what do you call it i would love to see what wins i always called it husking um, but apparently a lot of people call it shucking i just salted water for our corn to go in and yes i had to google how long to boil corn um, i always did the same thing with hard boiled eggs too but anyway boil water and then put the corn in for five minutes and it's done and then the lasagna was done. You can see what I mean about the noodles kind of curling up, but it was still really, really delicious. I am filming this video in real time, just showing you like how I work in the kitchen. So that's why things are a little bit all over the place, but I wanna show you how I get it all done within a certain time frame. So while I'm waiting for my corn to boil, I'm just rinsing off the rest of my produce that I'll be chopping up. And then, like I said, you only need five minutes for it to boil and it came out perfectly. So we are pausing the meal prep portion right now because we're gonna go ahead and eat dinner. Again, like I said, I'm showing you everything in real time because I wanna show you how I do it as a pregnant mom of three. Um, so I'm just going ahead and cutting the lasagna. We're all going to have dinner and then we're going to catch back up um, on the meal prep. But then I'm going to pause again to put the kids to sleep. So again, this is real life. This is real time. And this is the way that we can get things done to kind of just ease up the rest of our week. Having meals prepared, not only for dinner, but for lunch and having snacks prepared just really helps the week run smoother, but it also saves a lot of money. Okay, dinner was delicious and now the corn is nice and cooled off so I'm able to work with it. Luckily, I didn't just cut Carter's finger off. Um, he loves to grab you know, anything up while I'm cooking it and we talk about it all the time, but yeah, <laughs> moving on. Um, I did see that there's like a device, some kind of gadget on Amazon that cuts your corn off, but I like just doing it the good old fashioned way with a knife. And I like not having like a million little kernels. I really like the bigger chunks as well. So this corn is gonna be used um, to go in salads. If you've never had um, corn on the cob in your salad, you're missing out. It's very delicious, especially with ranch dressing. Um, but the rest of the corn we're gonna be using for our summer chicken salad. But now I'm just going ahead and cutting up all the rest of the produce that we'll be using in our recipes. I love a good sheet pan recipe um, almost as much as I love a good crock pot recipe just because it's really easy, you know? Um, if you have any sheet pan recipes that you love, let me know in the comments below. 
I also think I want to work on a summer crock pot video because like I said, I just love the crock pot. So what I'm doing here is I just cut up some little red potatoes, some broccoli. We have that um, chicken kale sausage that I cut up earlier in the video and then these mini peppers, which I love. Sorry, the camera is shaking. I'm pretty sure I had my camera like sitting on top of a thing of cheese or something for a tripod, so sorry about that. Um, and now I'm just going ahead and cutting up some onion for this, and I'm also gonna be cutting up some onion a little bit smaller for our chicken salad. Again, it's all about efficiency. So as far as seasonings go, I'm just being super simple and using just a little bit of salt and pepper. I am going to spray the middle of the baking sheet with some cooking spray and then I'm going to put our chicken sausage on there. I'm also going to be putting some olive oil on our veggies just to kind of help them cook up really nicely. Um, the chicken sausage has a ton of flavor. I actually just had it for lunch yesterday. Um, so you don't need a ton of spices plus you get um, flavoring from the onion and the peppers as well. I'm just putting that in the oven on 375 and I checked it at 15 minutes and kind of just stirred things up um, and then I did another 15 minutes. I will say that the um, potatoes took longer so I wound up having to put the potatoes on a different sheet. Um, it just really depends because I've had potatoes cook perfectly with it but I think it depends on the firmness of the potatoes when you buy them. Anyway, moving on to cutting up more produce. A lot of you liked um, how I cut my peppers and I can't take credit for that because I learned it from, I believe it was either Giada or Rachel Ray. I wanna say Giada. I love using um, fresh fruit juices in my cooking as well as like fresh herbs and things like that. This lime juice is going to be for our chicken salad. Um, I just want to say if you make anything from um, you know, this meal prep video, try this chicken salad. It is seriously delicious. Even the kids loved it um, besides Tanner, but we all know he's a little bit pickier. Um, he wouldn't even look at it, but that's just the phase that he's in right now. We all have toddlers like that. Um, but fed is best. So I'm not um, cutting up grapes today, but I am just kind of rinsing them off and washing them. I get so many questions on where this strainer is from. It's actually only $4. It's at Ikea. Um, they always have it when I go in in the kitchen section, but I love it. I've used it for like dishes to dry in it. Um, when I first got them years ago, I used it for bottle parts to dry in. But yeah, I love it. Very inexpensive and it goes right over the sink. Okay, grapes are clean. Our sheet pan meal is done. Um, this was intended for lunches, which is what we've been having them for, but you can totally do that for dinner ahead of time. Even if you want to just ingredient prep and just cut a bunch of stuff up and put them in containers um, to make meals that week, that's also a great idea if you didn't want to go ahead and cook it. Anyway, now I'm moving on to cucumbers and I'm just cutting this so that I can have it as a snack this week with just some salt or some hummus. The carrots will also be for a snack and now I'm just cutting the green parts off of the strawberries because that's how my kids eat them. They've been eating them big like this. Um, but I always get questions about my produce and staying fresh. 
produce in my house with three kids and you know Chris and I only really last for three days or four days at the most. Um, if I take out one container of strawberries at a meal, they will be gone. So we do really go through produce really fast. Um, my kids probably have some type of fruit with every meal, um, which is fine. So anyway, moving on to my kebabs, I'm just soaking them in some water and this will help them not catch on fire because I've definitely done that before. And then I'm just cutting the cheese. And yes, I have to laugh at that because I'm immature. But yes, I'm cutting the cheese. I'm just cutting mozzarella and some Colby Jack. And I'm putting them in a little Tupperware. And then we can pull these out just to go along with our grapes and our fruit and our veggies, whatever, as a snack. Um, you know, a lot of people just do string cheese and stuff like that. But the kids love these little cubes of cheese as well. Okay, moving on, we are headed to our chicken salad. And again, this is super easy, especially if you just do rotisserie chicken. I have some grape tomatoes in there. I have the juice of two limes. I have one avocado right now and then some corn, but I do wind up adding an additional avocado. Um, it really just depends on one, what kind of flavors you like. Um, if you hate avocado, you can use mayonnaise. Um, but yeah, the avocado is really, really delicious in this. Um, you know avocado turns brown even when you do use lime juice so there were like brown parts in it but it was still delicious I'm just using salt and pepper to season it a little bit of garlic powder and some chili powder if you like spice you can go ahead and use cumin or red pepper flakes you know make it your own this is just an idea um, you know to make it yummy so a lot of times I don't follow recipes because I just go by my taste um, when I first started cooking I thought I had to have a recipe for everything because I was scared to mess things up but just be confident and just do what you like in your food So the sheet pan meal is all ready. I'm just going ahead and putting it in a tubware. And like I said, I had to put the potatoes in a little bit longer. So that's why they are on a different baking dish. Um, another little tip I have for you, which honestly isn't even a tip, but when I'm feeling like I'm in a rut and I don't really know what to cook, I go on Pinterest and I don't get overwhelmed. I feel like you can get overwhelmed by Pinterest or you can get inspired. So a lot of my meals are Pinterest inspired or I see something that, that looks good to me, but there's something I would change or, you know, just things like that. And when I said that you don't need a recipe, that's for like this type of cooking for baking. Oh my gosh, I need an exact recipe. Baking gives me anxiety for some reason, um, but things like this, cooking like this, it's all good. So the quinoa and corn I'm going to be using for salads this week. Um, I've already used some of it yesterday. Along with that cheese that we cut up, we also put that in our salad yesterday. Um, really, ingredient prep is awesome if you don't want to meal prep. So I'm just putting away our produce now. Um, I always get so many questions about these containers, and they do sell out pretty quickly on Amazon. Um, but I actually bought one, an extra one, this uh, last week, I think, to give away in a giveaway soon. So make sure you're following me on Instagram at t.beaston. I'm going to be doing a giveaway on there for some of my favorite products like the pink baking dishes and things like that. Um, now moving on to good old fashioned overnight oats. I'm just doing a half cup of oats. Um, I did some frozen wild blueberries and I'm topping it with some vanilla yogurt. Um, you could again do this however you want. A lot of times if I'm not using blueberries I'll go ahead and put uh, bananas and peanut butter as long as you have the right amount of liquid in your overnight oats, they will be fine. I only make two at a time. I like to add healthy toppings like chia seeds. And then 
again, like I said, you need to make sure it has enough liquid. So I'm mixing in some um, coconut milk as well. And I am going to stir it. I know a lot of people don't stir it. They just put it in their fridge like this. But I've, I've had like big chunks of dry oats when I've done that in the past. So I do like to just stir it up. And I already ate both of these. Um, but yeah, like I said, I like making two at a time. I don't really like making them further in advance than that. You guys are probably so sick of seeing me make this, but you know, there might be some new eyes here. So I am making yogurt bark as well because my kids love it. It's an amazing summer tree. All you do is spray either some wax paper, or some parchment paper. Um, you wanna do your yogurt um, pretty thin, otherwise it's very hard to break apart. Uh, so I'm just using that vanilla Greek yogurt, give it some extra protein. I'm putting some chopped up strawberries that I cut up earlier and some chocolate chips on it. You can add sprinkles, you can add whatever kind of fruit you want and you just pop it in the freezer and it lasts, you know, I would say at least a week for us. Um, I did hear some feedback that some kids don't like holding it in their hand. Um, another option for you is to put it in a popsicle mold. I've done that as well. Um, if your kids don't like either that really cold feeling or they don't like the texture, that is just another easy option for you. So I can just put this in the freezer for a couple hours, however the kids are sleeping. So I'm just doing it in the freezer overnight and it'll be ready for the next day. Okay, moving on to our dates. So it's really simple, you just cut some bacon in half. I really love turkey bacon with it, um, but my mother-in-law and my in-laws like real bacon. So that's why I'm using real bacon. You literally just twirl it up, you cook it on 375 until the bacon is to your liking. Um, and make sure you get pitted dates. You don't want any pits in your dates. Um, but it's just like a yummy, sweet and salty appetizer. And I just wanted to include it in this video because tons of us are going to barbecues and things like that. And we need something to bring. So just pop these in the oven before you head over to your next barbecue. And it's always, always a hit. Everyone loves them. Um, so now that that's all wrapped up for the next day, I'm going to go ahead and work on my kebabs. And like I said, I just had the wooden sticks um, soaking in the water. And now I'm doing some chicken mixed with veggies. And I'm also bringing, I'm making a massive amount because I'm bringing some to uh, my mother-in-law's birthday party as well. But you can put anything on here. Um, when I make them just for us at home, I actually really enjoy making just all meat on one and all vegetables on the other just so that you can cook them um, perfectly to the consistency that you like because for me I like my chicken really well done on the grill and my veggies like you know just basically like tender and slightly charred but again they do look prettier um, when they're all mixed together but that's just another option and again if you take the time out of your week to do these once you literally have dinner made for another night um, and I also love shrimp kebabs. I'm not doing anything with the shrimp until we are going to cook them, but I just put salt, pepper, and um, a little bit of garlic on them before we cook them. That's really all they need. Also, if you have lemon juice, that's another really delicious addition. So I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and it gave you some meal ideas or even just some inspiration to ingredient prep. Um, and just let me know in the comments below what other videos you want to see this month, if there's any other type of cooking videos. Um, just thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.